So to narrow it down even further, we're now going to look at the results of navicular bursal anesthesia. Uh, well, as far as the approach to this navicular bursal is concerned, most people will have their own time honored technique of doing this. Um, we, did, we did some work on this and we decided that the best way to hit the navicular bursa consistently is to put a marker on the roof wall halfway along the distance of the coronary band from the dorsal aspect to the palmar aspect of the foot. So we actually did that on a number of cadaver legs. We put a drawing pin on the hoof wall halfway along the dorsal and the palmar borders of the uh, coronary band, dropped it down one centimeter below the coronary band, and each time the drawing pin overlapped the navicular. So this is a consistent identifier of the position of the navicular bone in the foot, regardless of the conformation of the foot, whether it be a boxy foot, a low heeled foot, a sheer heeled foot, it's always there, halfway along the coronary band, between half a centimeter and a centimeter distal to that point. So here you have the illustration of one of these drawing pins, and then when we put the needle in, we try to aim for that point, not, not exactly for that point, but for the line connecting this point on the medial hoof wall and the lateral hoof wall, obviously, because that would be the navicular position. <coughs> so no matter where you put the needle, you try and aim for that point. And that gives you a very high success rate, even without radiographic control, although I would still advise that these injections are always performed with radiographic control or ultrasonographic control, uh, but we'll talk about that at some other time. So, if we put three cc's of mepivacate in the navicular bursa of a horse, what will the result be in terms of desensitization? Remember, we did this on all these horses with the set screws in the sole, the toe in the heel, with in the toxin in the coffin joint, with the toxin uh, in the, uh, well, not in the bursa, because in this case we obviously had uh, mepivacate in the bursa. So, three cc's of log line static in the navicular bursa will result in desensitization of the gonotrochlear apparatus, the navicular bursa, the navicular bursa the navicular ligaments, again the toe region of the sole, which was quite surprising, and the distal portion of the digital flexor tendon. No anesthesia in the coffin joint. So horses that were made laid with endotoxin in the coffin joint did not get better after a navicular bursa block. How do we explain this? So we inject the navicular bursa with local anesthetic. Anything that's blue will be desensitized. Cototrochlear apparatus, again the toe region of the sole, and the heel region of the sole, generally not desensitized, but again this caveat, if you start waiting longer than 10 minutes, then you don't really know anymore what is desensitized. I often see people, they, they look at it 5 minutes, and they look at it after 10 minutes, and then they look at it again after 30 minutes, but after 30 minutes you don't really know what is desensitized anymore. Why does coffin joint anesthesia? desensitize the navicular bursa, but bursal anesthesia does not desensitize the coffin joint. Okay, well, this could be because of diffusion differences, and this has actually been documented. There is more ready diffusion from the coffin joint to the bursa than from the bursa to the coffin joint. And this has been shown with contrast with, uh, uh, sorry, with the uh, ethylene blue, but also with cortisone preparations. Although the findings were not necessarily all that consistent, but generally it's shown that there's four, more, four times more diffusion in this direction than in that direction. However, we don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is, again, in the distribution of the nerves and the small branches that are responsible for innervation of each area. So Sack, in his paper, identified this particular branch, I, I can't remember which number it was, but this particular branch as the branch that's responsible for coughing joint sensation. Okay, we know that if we block the coughing joint, of course we're going to desensitize the coughing joint, but we're also going to contact the palm digital nerve proximal to the site where that branch is given off to the joint. Now the theory is, or what we think happens, is that when, block, when we block the bursa, we contact the nerve further distally. And so the desensitization of the palm digital nerve will still occur, but distal to the site of the branch that goes off to the coffin joint. And why do we think that? We think that because we think that's the only way to explain why the toe region of the sole is desensitized. Because it has to mean that the sensation in the continuation of the palmar digital nerve through the parietal groove of the distal phalanx is somehow blocked. 
And you can't, ex you can't explain that just by thinking about synovial anesthesia. Okay? Right, so bursal anesthesia can differentiate between coffin joint pain and podotropial pain, including the deep reflexive death. So we go back to that table, okay, comparing the results to coffin joint anesthesia on the left and bursal anesthesia, and then we try to define where the pain is coming from. A bursal block that's positive, by definition, is navicular pain, although we must first eliminate the presence of toe pain in the hoof testers. If bursal anesthesia is negative, then it can either be coffin joint pain or indistinct keel pain associated with the corium of the foot, the digital cushion maybe, other structures in the palmar aspect of the foot. How did, just out of interest, going back to those 102 horses, in that referral population in 1995 at the Trust, how did those horses dis distribute over those four groups? 87% had navicular pain, phototropial pain. 6% had coffin joint pain. And 9% had palmar, indistinct palmar heel pain. Now, I know that's a referred population, but it does reinforce the idea with me that the most important cause of chronic foot lameness is still podotropia pain and not hoof imbalance or um, palmar heel pain. It's funny that the same work, similar work, was done by Tracy Turner at the University of Minnesota when Sue Dyson was doing this work in animal culture, and the results were identical. The same numbers, 6 and 9 percent, were found in these two columns. So it's not just an observation from a referral population at the Trust in the UK, but it was the same at the University of Minnesota at the same time. 